I want to, I'm thrilled that my wife is here. My baby girl, Elin, is here. I do have a 19-year-old uh, daughter back home. She's in college, and, and she's at that age where she doesn't want to be seen with me. I, actually, that's not even true. Uh, she loves me. I love her. She's actually at home helping lead worship today, and uh, that's, that's awesome. Yeah. So I also have a 22-year-old son. They're going to throw a picture of him up on the screen. And he is a soldier. For those of you who are military, uh, big day for, uh, for the military, our armed services. Uh, if you're military, you'll understand this language, 11 Bravo with the 101st stationed in Poland. If you're not military, that means he's in the infantry. He's with some group of soldiers somewhere in Poland. So uh, <laughs> anyhow, I am super proud of him. Yeah. And when he finds out I did this, he will be very upset with me, but he's in Poland and there's nothing he can do about it. So he, he's going to be so upset with me. But the reason I want to show you this picture of him is because I just wanted you to have a little bit of vision of who he is. Because when he was eight years old, in fact, I have an eight-year-old picture of him and I could not find it on my computer last night. I was going to give you, uh, them that as well. Uh, because all of his life, this is what Reeve looked like. He always had on army fatigues. He always had on an army helmet. All of his life, from the time about three years old, he just wanted to be a soldier. That's all he ever wanted to be. And so he's really living that out. And so he's just the, the, the cutest little soldier. Uh, not a little now. He's much bigger than I am. But um, love him dearly. And when he was eight years old, um, when he was little, I would always take him to his room. Uh, at night, it was time to go to bed, and I would tuck him in, and I would kneel down beside his bed, and I would pray with him, and he always wanted me to tell him a story, and I would I'd have to make up a story to tell him, and I'd always tell him some fantastical story and help him go to sleep, and so uh, I prayed with him, and I, was, I went and I turned the lights out, and I was just about to pull his door closed, and I heard him say, Dad, um, can I ask you a question? And there, there's, how many of you parents know there's a part of you that's like, well, no, because I'm so tired. I just want to go to bed. I, I need to get to bed myself. But you love your kids so much that you come back in the room with a big smile on your face. And you're like, yeah, sure, son. Uh, what's your question? And he looks at me and he says, can we move? And I was like, well, no. <laughs> you know, this is where our life is. You know, I work here. Our, everything about our lives is right here. Uh, but why are you asking if we can move? You know, what's going on that you want to know if you can move? Now, you have to remember, he's only eight years old when this happens. And he looks at me. He's like, Dad. He said, there's just some things going on at school. I've done some things I probably shouldn't have done. I've said some things I probably shouldn't have said. And I'm looking at my son. I'm thinking, you're only eight. You know, what could you possibly have done, possibly have said that would make you want to move? And he's telling me this, you know, I've just done some things, I've said some things, and, and I just need a fresh start. Eight-year-old little boy saying, I just need a fresh start. How many of you have ever been in a place where you could say, I need a fresh start? Well, we've, I believe we've all been there, and not only have we all been there, we're all going to be there again. We're all going to be at this place where we just need a fresh start, something to just, just get us to the next place in our lives. And so this morning, I want to preach to you. I'm going to preach to you just the idea that God is a God of fresh starts. And, and we see this in our world. The Bible tells us, uh, Paul wrote this in the book of Romans, tells us that we can understand God by looking at the world. Like you can just look at how God made the world and it'll give you an understanding of God. And so here's what I want you to see this morning in the way that God designed the world. He designed a system of fresh starts. Now, how many of you are systems people? Like you, you like a good system. I'm a list maker. Any list makers in the house? Like you've got your list. Now, how many of you have a list that helps you track your list. Like you've got multiple lists, but then, okay, so we've got some serious systems people. You've got your system. You know what you're going to do. You get up every morning at 6 a.m. You know you're gonna eat three scrambled eggs for breakfast. You're walking out the door at seven. You're on your way to the gym. You're gonna work out. We're leaving the gym at eight. That'll put me in the office at 8.10, and at, I'm gonna be at my desk working at 8.15, and, and you've got your program. That's who you are. Well, you got that from God. Your desire from systems comes from God. God puts systems in us. 
Take a look at the way our world revolves around the sun. We know every year we've got a fresh start. But it's not just an annual fresh start. You have seasons. Winter, summer, spring, fall, you have all these seasons. Now, I grew up in Florida where there's really two seasons. There's hurricane season and there's just hot season. Those are, those are the two seasons that we have. I don't, it may be a little bit like that here, uh, being this part of this far south. But now I live in North Carolina where we actually have four seasons, and I love that. There's, a, there's winter and there's spring, and, and sometime soon, summer's going to start, kick in, and it's going to get really hot, and then we'll go back in. But in the seasons, we see what happens. We see that in the spring, new life comes forth, but then in the fall, everything begins to die, and the colors are just beautiful, and we love the fall. And then in the winter, the trees are bare, and there's something that's actually beautiful about the skeletons of the those trees. We love that. But it's not just seasons. It's actually every day. Every day we have a fresh start. You have the setting of the sun that closes out a day and the rising of the sun that brings in a new day. And we see that the Lord is a God of fresh starts every day. In fact, Lamentations chapter three, the, the prophet wrote this scripture. He, he wrote to us, my, my mercies are new Every morning, great is his faithfulness. His mercies begin afresh every day. And so what I want you to know here today is that it's not just a one-time thing. You don't have a God that says, all right, I'm going to give you 10 fresh starts, and that's it. Once you're out of fresh starts, you're done. No, God has programmed into his system that every day would be a day of fresh starts, not a one-time thing. You get it over and over and over and over again. And this is something I want you to begin to believe, because if you will believe that God is a God of fresh starts, then wherever you are, God is going to get you through that place, and you will get to your next fresh start. And this is what God wants for us. John chapter 10, verse 10, Jesus makes a statement, the thief comes to steal, to kill, and destroy, but I am come that you might have this rich and satisfying life. I love those words, rich and satisfying. Why rich and satisfying? Because if you have to live in a place where you have run out of fresh starts, then you're going to come to a season in your life where you'll feel like your entire life is going to be nothing but winter. And no one wants to live there. And maybe you feel like you're there right now. Or maybe you feel like you're just in the heat of the summer and everything is dry. And you're in this very dry season in your life. And you're wondering, okay, God, where are you and why am I having to deal with these things and for which I'm dealing and why am I having to live in this culture in which I'm living right now? I, I, I do, maybe it's a, a season in, in, in just your personal life, who you are, that you're just at this place where you're like, you know what, I, I just got to break out of this and I've, I've got to get beyond where I am because I, I just need a fresh start. Maybe it's in your relationships. Maybe you need a fresh start in your relationships. You're in a relationship that looks like it's, it's just at a dead end, and, and maybe, maybe it's your marriage. Maybe there's a couple here today that your marriage just seems like it's just going downhill, and, and you don't know what to do, and your marriage needs a fresh start. Maybe it's your career. Maybe you need a fresh start in your career. You don't need a new job. You don't even need a new position. You just need a fresh start right where you are, who you are as a person in your career, and you feel like you're there. Really cool story that I read many years ago. I love this story. Thomas Jefferson, our third president, when he was 39 years old, his wife passed away. And he wrote in his journal, he wrote, my life is over. And he felt like everything for him was, was past. He'd already written the Declaration of Independence. He'd been the governor of Virginia. But at this point in his life, he felt like everything was done. Why even bother going on to live. Why even go any further? He didn't realize that he was still going to be the president of the United States. He didn't realize that he was still going to found the University of Virginia, and he didn't realize that he would go on to build an incredible place at Monticello, his home that now is a tourist site for many Americans. Here's the point from Thomas Jefferson's story. You may be at a point where you're writing in your journal, my life is over, but I'm here to tell you this morning, you have so many more fresh starts ahead of you. So many more fresh starts ahead of you. It's going to be incredible. It's going to be incredible. So I want to, I want to share. So the question then is, okay, how do, how do I get fresh starts? How do I create this system 
of fresh starts in my life that I can go for it and have these fresh starts. So I want to, I want just the, the coolest story for me, maybe not the coolest story, but it's definitely in my top three of coolest stories in the Bible because the coolest story has to be the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Yeah. That has to be the coolest story. But this would be up there, and it's from Ezekiel chapter 37. Ezekiel chapter 37, the prophet. Now, Ezekiel's a super cool prophet. If you've never read the book of Ezekiel, but you like mind benders, things that just twist your ideas around, Read the book of Ezekiel because he's got that in there. Like he, he, he could create uh, all these movies that we see in Hollywood these days. It's just, just who he is. All right, so here's this story in Ezekiel. This is what the prophet says. The Lord took me, the Lord took hold of me, and I was carried away by the Spirit of the Lord to a valley filled with bones. And so you have to get the picture here now. Just get, let your mind wander here a little bit to, a, to this incredible, just massive valley. And there's just bones everywhere. So just picture that in your mind. He led me all around the the all around all around among the bones that covered the valley floor, and they were scattered everywhere across the ground, and they were completely dried out. So let that go into that picture. Now these just aren't bones. It's not like they're skeletons that are laying there and they they're they've just died. These are bleach bones. These bones have been there a long time and there is no life left in them whatsoever. And you need to, you need to see that because you're going to get to a place where you feel like you've gone too far, but you haven't gone dry bones far. You haven't gone valley of nothing far. And so wherever you are right now, there's still life left in you. But in this picture, there's no life. And since there's no life, There's less there than what you have. And if God can do a miracle with this valley of dry bones, then by all means, God could do a miracle where you are. And so it's the, it's just, just dry, dried out. Then verse, verse three, he says, then he asked me, and this is what God is always going to do. And you need to be able to answer this question because God is going to ask you, can these bones become living people again? God's going to ask you that question. And the reason he's going to ask you that question is because he's not going to go somewhere you're not willing to go. And if you aren't willing to allow yourself to be taken somewhere new for something new to begin in your life, God's God's a gentleman. He's not going to force you. He's only going to take you as far as you want to go. But I want to be the kind of person that says, God, whatever you think you can do for me, I want to believe that you can do that for me. I want to believe it. I want to receive it. I want to just be totally open to that. And so wherever you are in your life, maybe you feel like you're in the valley of dry bones. And if that's you today, if you feel like you're in the valley, maybe you feel like you're on your way there. Maybe you're not quite there yet, but you see that it potentially could be in your future. Here's, here's, you've got to hear this question. Can these bones become living people again? And watch the prophet's answer. It's the best non-answer. Like, the Ezekiel wants to say yes, but this seems impossible. It's not just that it's bones. Like, if they were still skeletons, maybe. But these aren't even skeletons. Like, the, like I can't even tell you if that's the arm bone or the leg bone or the hip bone. I can't tell you which is which. It's just bones. And they're just scattered everywhere. And so the prophet says, well, I think you know the answer. I mean, you're asking me the question, but I think you already know the answer. It's a faith question. Here's here's the real question. Do you believe? This is what God's asking you today. Do you believe that God can bring incredible? Remember, John 10, 10 said, rich, satisfying life. Do you believe that God can bring you to a place where your life is rich and satisfying? That's the question. And and, and even though Ezekiel said, well, Lord, you know, God's asking for people today. Do you believe that I can bring life into you? This is Pentecost Sunday. Do you believe that I can put my spirit, my Holy Spirit in you, and that I can completely revolutionize anything and everything you know? I can turn everything around. Maybe you feel like financially you have come to a place of ruin and you're going to be destitute the rest of your life. Do you believe that God can turn that around? Maybe you've come to a place in your health where you feel like your health is just going to go down from here, and you're like, I'm not through living. I want God to turn that around. Do you believe that God can heal my 
my body. Or maybe it's a place in your family. Maybe your children have left and, and you don't know what to do. They're, you're not speaking to your children. You want to repair that relationship. Or maybe you're the child and it's your parents and you want to repair that relationship. God is asking, do you believe that these bones can become a living people again? And the answer for all of us has to be, yes, Lord, I believe that anything is possible. Anything is possible. But, but what about the part of me that doesn't believe? Because there is a part of me that doesn't believe. Now, this is why I love the Bible. I, this is why the Bible is so super cool. Because look what happens in the book of Mark, Gospel of Mark. There's a story where this man comes to Jesus and he says, Hey, Jesus, um, can you heal my child? And, and Jesus says, I can do you believe? And the, here's what the father says. The father instantly cried out, I do believe, but help me overcome my unbelief. Like the father's saying, I know that you can heal because I've seen you heal people over here, yes. yeah. but I'm just not sure I believe you can heal me. I know you can bless me financially because I've seen people here and there and over, over there that have all been blessed financially. I'm just not sure you can do it for me. I know that you can repair relationships. I'm just not sure. And so there has to be this element in us where we acknowledge, okay, I do believe, but I also need some help with my unbelief. So that part of me that's not sure, because there's a lot of times, I'm a pastor of a church. I love our church. It's an incredible church, Fayetteville, North Carolina, the home of Fort Bragg. So many cool things happening there. It's just, a, it's just an amazing thing. And I walk in so many Sunday mornings and I'm fired up and I'm ready to go. We're going to have great church and everything's going to be wonderful. But there's also some Monday mornings when I walk into my office and I'm thinking, God, I'm not even sure if I can go another day. Here's the reason why. Because mixed in with our faith sometimes is some doubt. And we, if we acknowledge that, then we can push back against the doubt and we can say, okay, God, yes, I believe. But now there's some doubt in me that I need you to help me with to get rid of that doubt, to go to a place of belief. Because if I was 100% faith and no doubt, yes. I'd probably be superhuman. I think doubt is in all of us. I don't think there's any one of us. Even the most faith-filled people that you've ever met, you will, if you're around them enough, you will see that moment of doubt. Yes. And so doubt has to be dealt with. And so the first question, I'm going I'm to show you three things in this story. From the, from the book of Ezekiel, I'm going to show you three things in this story. But I believe if you will get these three things, if you'll get these three things in your system, you will live a system of fresh starts. And the first one is faith. Do you believe? And you have to come back to that question, yes, Lord, but help my unbelief. I believe. And so tomorrow morning, Monday morning, well, not tomorrow morning because you're going to sleep in. It's Memorial Day. But Tuesday morning, when you get up to go about your day and the question is asked, do you believe? Yes, I believe. Now, there may be some doubt in me, but I'm asking you to help me with my unbelief. So here's... Here, here's the, the second thing, Ezekiel 37, verse 4. Then he said to me, speak a prophetic message to these bones and say, dry bones, listen to the word of the Lord. And this is the second key. The first one is faith. The second one is the word of God, and there will be a third one. Listen to, these, to the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign word of the Lord says. I am going to put breath into you. And make you live again. So this is the word of God going forth. I will put flesh and muscles on you and cover you with skin. I will put breath into you and you will come to life. And then you will know that I am the Lord. And, and so this is the word that's going forth. So Ezekiel says, so I spoke this message. And as I spoke, there was a rattling noise all across the valley. The bones of each body came together. Now, now, remember, I ask you to get a picture of this in your mind. You've got a picture of a valley in your mind. There's just bones everywhere. But now, all of a sudden, there's just bones that are starting to move. Like, I don't know where the arm was and the hand and the finger bones. I don't know where all that was, but I'd like to think that it was just scattered everywhere. But now, all of a sudden, these bones are starting to move, and they're coming together. So as I spoke this message, just as he told me, suddenly as I spoke, there was a rattling noise across the valley. The bones of each body came together and attached themselves to each other in complete skeletons. Then as I watched, 
muscles and flesh formed over the bones, then the skin formed to cover their bodies. And we'll just stop right there for a moment. Everything comes back together according to the preached word of God. All right, so the first thing you have to have in your life is faith. The second thing you have to have in your life is the word of God. If you have the Bible in your life but no faith, the Bible is not going to be as great for your life as it can be if you're a person of faith. You have to come to the Word of God with faith. In fact, nothing you do really counts if you don't believe. Like, if you're worshiping here today but you don't even believe God exists, then what are you worshiping? If you're praying but you don't believe God hears your prayers, then to whom are you praying? Everything begins with faith. And that is the same thing with the Word of God. One of the most shocking statistics to me and, and you can look this up on the internet and depending on which study you look, but one study shows this, that fewer than 9% of American Christians read their Bible on a regular basis. Fewer than 9%. So there's 91% of Christians who are not opening up their Bible. Now it says that 50% of, the, of Christians will read their Bible three to four times a year. Three to four times a year. Now... Here's, okay, why don't we read our Bibles? Like, if that's the most incredible book that's ever been written, why don't we read it? Because we already think we know what's in it. Yeah. We, we think we know what's in it. I challenge our church at the beginning of every year, I challenge our church. We, we, we give out Bible reading charts. We made one especially for our church so that our church can read the, the Bible through together. And, and, and we challenge them every year. We always challenge them to read the New Testament. And we'd like for them to get all the way through the Old Testament as well. It's a big challenge we do. And most Christians have not read through the entire Bible. And I'm not going to ask you today if you read through the entire Bible because studies would show only a handful of us would actually raise our hands. Most Christians have not read all the way through the Bible. Bible, but I challenged our church to do it, and I challenged them, okay, if you read five chapters a day, it'll take you one year. If you read four chapters a day, and I show them the chart, well, if you will read just one chapter a day, it'll take you a little over three years to read through the Bible. Well, one day I'm walking down the hallway of our church, and there's a lady came in from the outside, and she's coming towards me, and she yells out at me. It's the middle of the year. I don't, I don't, I don't have the context for this. She just yells out at me, pastor, I did it. And I'm like, well, you did what? Like, got a new job. You know, I have no idea. What did you do? And she said, I, I read through the entire Bible. And I was like, that is, that is so incredible. I, I love that. And she said, three years ago, you challenged me to read one chapter a day. And she said, I started reading one chapter a day. And today I finished reading. It took her three and a half years to do it. But what does it matter if it takes me three and a half years if every single day I'm putting a little bit of God's word in my life? And she looked at me and she said, and what, what surprises me is how much was in there that I didn't know. Like there was a lot in there I did not know. And so here's what I want you to understand today that when you put faith and you mix it with the word of God and every day, if every day you'll have a little bit of the Bible in your life, now you're, you're super aggressive and you can read five chapters a day, great, go ahead and do that. But if you're like regular human person and one chapter a day is, is where you can go, I promise you every single day. Now I'm 52 years old, I've been doing this all my life. I have read through the Bible so many times that I've lost count and I still read my Bible every day and still every day there's something that jumps out at me that I did not know was coming and here's why. Because there is power and authority in the word of God that puts the bones back together and puts flesh back on them. And so you think your life is over, but God's just saying, hey, get a little bit of faith, get a little bit of my word in there, and I will bring the bones back together and I will show you something that you, can't, that you didn't think you could see. But here, here's the third one. So there's three of them. The first was faith. The second one is the word of God. And all three of these are in this story. And so in Ezekiel chapter, he, he says, but they still had no breath in them. And then verse nine, it says, then he said to me, so this is the third message. Now watch this. The first one was a question to Ezekiel, do you believe? The second one was preach the word to the bones. But now the third one, watch what, it's different. And he said to me, speak a prophetic message to the winds. So now instead of speaking to the bones, he's speaking to the wind. The wind represents the Holy Spirit of God. This is Pentecost Sunday. Yeah. The yeah. wind represents the Holy Spirit of God. Speak to the winds, speak a prophetic message and say, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Come, O breath, from the four winds. Breathe into these dead bodies so they may live again. And so Ezekiel says in verse 10, so I spoke 
the word. So I spoke the word. I don't have verse 10. Is it? There we go. So I spoke the message as he commanded me, and breath came into their bodies. They all came into my life and stood up on their feet, a great army. Well, here, here's what happens. When God begins to put his spirit in you, what you thought was dead is going to be brought back to life. What you thought was over, it will have a whole new beginning. This is a system of fresh starts. It's not a one-time thing. Now, here's, uh, here, here's what I love about the Holy Spirit. When, when I was a young kid, I always had in my mind that you were, like you had this moment where you were filled with the Holy Spirit, and that was it. But as I matured and grew up a little bit, I began to realize that God's not a one-time thing. It's like you don't just get one infill in the Holy Spirit, but like this can happen to your life all the time. I have a friend who calls it free refills, and I love that. I love that God gives us free refills. And Acts chapter 3 says that. When you read, read through the, 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 book, the book of Acts, Notice how many times it says that the believers were again filled with the Holy Spirit. So it's not a one-time thing. So if you are a person who 10 years ago or 20 years ago, you had this encounter with God and nothing's happened since then, that's not the will of God. That's not the desire of God at all. The desire of God is that you would be continually filled with the Holy Spirit. In fact, Paul wrote to the Ephesians in Ephesians chapter five, he wrote that he made this statement. He, Oh, man, you use the NLT. I was hoping you'd use the DFW version. The DFW version is the Daryl Franklin Williams, not Dallas-Fort Worth. It's Daryl Franklin Williams. That's my name. Sometimes I translate the Bible uh, in the words that, that I want to use because, you know, I can read uh, Strong's Concordance just as well as they can. So um, it, it, here's, here's what the last phrase says, where it says, instead be filled with the Holy Spirit. In the Greek, it says continually filled with the Holy Spirit. It's not a one-time thing. Like you just get the Holy Spirit one time. It's a continual thing. So like every morning when I get up, I can say, I can pray in my prayers, Father, I want today to be again flowing with the Holy Spirit. I want it to happen to me again today. So if you've never had the Holy Spirit, you can pray that prayer. Father, I want to be baptized in the Holy Spirit today, and you will be filled with the Holy Spirit. But tomorrow morning, you don't have to live on what happened yesterday, but today I can have the infilling of the Holy Spirit. And in fact, Ezekiel writes a super cool story about the Holy Spirit being like rivers of water that flows, and he compares it to the stagnant pools that die. And I don't want to be a stagnant pool that's dead, but he says the rivers of water flow, and on either side, the trees grow and bring forth their fruit in their season. These three ingredients are the system to having fresh starts in your life. Every day, believing that God can. Every day, put in a little bit of word in my mind and every day allowing the Holy Spirit to blow the wind to blow in my life. I want that in my life. I just want, I just want the Holy Spirit to be on me, over me, all around me. I want to be filled with that. I want to be flowing with it. And so in this, you see those three ingredients. So there are people here today. You want to, you want a fresh start. And some of you need a big fresh start. You really do. You need a huge fresh start. You don't just need a little fresh start. You need a big fresh start. But there's sometimes you just need a little fresh start. You just need a little bit of something. How I many of you know that sometimes a, a good cup of coffee in the morning just kind of helps to, to, to kick you off? Anybody, anybody believe that here? You know what's funny about that? I don't drink coffee. I don't. It tastes like dirt. I just don't, I don't get it. So, but my vice is chocolate. How many of you believe chocolate can solve a lot of problems? Yes. Can I get a witness in the house this morning? I believe it can. I've watched it happen. It works miracles. Amen. Okay, here's, here's the thing, though. Sometimes you just need that little start. You, 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 and, but every day you do. Every day you need a fresh start. That's why the sun rises every morning. That, that's why it sets every day, because God knows. And, and here's why that's so important that you see that. Because we see God as perfect. And God doesn't make mistakes. And since he's perfect and he doesn't make mistakes, we struggle to forgive ourselves when we make mistakes. When we have failures, when we have setbacks, we forgive, we, we, we struggle to, to give ourselves a break because we see that God is perfect. And what's worse is we see other people around us whose lives seem perfect. But the truth of the matter is if you could pull back the curtain, there's as much disaster in their home as there is in yours. 
And so because of that, we don't give ourselves the opportunity to have a fresh start. And so we push ourselves away from the opportunities. But I'm challenging you today to build into your system every day, faith, the Word of God, and the Holy Spirit, that every single day can be a day of fresh starts. Will you stand with me and let's give the Lord a great big hand clap of praise. Let's do that real big. And here's, so here's what I want to do. I don't, I don't know how y'all close out. So can I have just a little bit of latitude, a little bit of liberty to close out? What I'd like to do is if you need a fresh start today, and I don't care if it's a little one, a big one, a medium-sized one, I don't, I don't care what kind of fresh start you need, but if you would like a fresh start, I, I, would, I would like to invite you, and this is bold. This is like really bold. Um, but I, I would like for you just to acknowledge that just, um, if, just, just by raising your hand, just like, yeah, I, I, I need that. I, I, I want that. I want that fresh start. And, I, and I, I'll share with you, I, I, I need a fresh start today. I do. I need a fresh start. You put your hands down. I want us to believe that God can give us a fresh start. I really do. I want us, I want us to believe that. But I also want you to pray this. Remember, God said, to ask, God said to Ezekiel, do you believe? And so that's the first question, do you believe? And if you believe today, then anything else is possible. Second question was, the second thing that happened was the word was preached. And that just happened. But the third thing was that, the, that Ezekiel was to speak to the winds. And that's the, that, that is the, the Holy Spirit of God. The, the, in the Bible, the wind, the Holy Spirit is always identified as a wind a flowing water, or a burning fire. And so this morning, I want you to pray. And I want, I'm serious about this. I want you to pray, Father, I want to be filled with your Holy Spirit. I want it to be flowing in my life. If you've never had the Holy Spirit of God, and that's the first time you're praying it, I want you to pray that prayer, and I just want you to begin to worship Him, and I want you to believe that He is filling you with the Holy Spirit. And he will do supernatural things in your life. And your pastor is taught on that. And you, you understand what's going to happen in your life. But if you've always, if, you've, if maybe you've been, you've had the Holy Spirit in your life. It's not new to you. I still want you to pray, Father, fill me. Because Jesus said it's supposed to be like a spring that is bursting forth. It's the fire in our bones. In the name of Jesus.